On August 26, 2015, in typical fashion, I woke up, picked up my cell phone so I could scroll through my Instagram feed to check the comment creeping section on Baller Alert. But instead, I saw an email with the video of two people being shot to death in real time. I don't care who you are. Watching two people being killed on national television will affect you emotionally. However, turning this murder into a gun control dog and pony show minutes after the shooting because you can't make sense of what just happened is ridiculous. Look, I get it. When stuff like this happens, anyone with a heart is going to want to feel the need to do something about it. The problem is there's an incredible disconnect regarding the topic of guns in this country. Gun control advocates keep saying common sense this, common sense solution that, this common sense legislation here. There are some common sense things that only Congress can do that we know would have a tangible impact in reducing gun violence in this country. So I'm trying to bring common sense ideas. Uh, as I say, I'm a gun owner, I'm a hunter, I go through background checks. Tackle Andy Parker, whatever it takes to get common sense gun legislation passed in America. Let's be clear about something. There's nothing common sense about something as complex as violence and mental health. There's a cornucopia of existing gun laws already, and we've exhausted all of the common sense ones. Now we're at the hard part. And that doesn't mean passing arbitrary feel-good laws that will do more to hurt good people than they will the bad. We all have the same goal of keeping people safe. That's why we have guns, so that we can protect ourselves from the people we don't want having guns in the first place, but do. Unfortunately, reality dictates we don't know who those people are until they're beating, stabbing, or shooting at us. A psychopath lowlife who couldn't deal with the fact that no one liked him, which probably included his mother, records a video of himself killing two innocent people in cold blood, and then uploads it online like a low-budget reporter that he was, and then sends out some bullshit manifesto complaining about being the last of the black gay Mohicans. And in response to this atrocity in her typical robotic fashion, Hillary, where are the emails Clinton, starts talking gun control before they can cover the bodies of the deceased. And there is so much evidence that if guns were not so readily available, if we had universal background checks, if we could just put some time out between the person who's upset because he got fired or the domestic abuse or whatever other motivation. And here, folks, is why Hillary I serve the base Clinton, President Obama, and the rest of the gun control Wu-Tang Clan are so full of it. They try to take advantage of people's ignorance about guns and their emotional response to horrible events to win votes and push an agenda that fosters an unhealthy dependence on the government, which does nothing but put more power into the hands of the people who only care about you during election season. To people who don't know much about guns and don't care to learn and simply want the killings to stop, more background checks, waiting periods, and a high-capacity magazine ban and assault weapons ban sound amazing and harmless. And gun control advocates know this. They know they can't ban guns outright, so they do it slowly and methodically. They bank on these measures not working so that when the next shooting happens, they say, well, that didn't work, so now we need to do more. And before you know it, we're banning guns outright. You should at least have to pass a background check to show you're not a criminal or someone legally prohibited from buying one. And that's just common sense. A background check was conducted on this guy before he bought the gun, and it revealed none of the criteria that would have kept him from having a gun, like a felony conviction, a protective order, or a history of psychiatric treatment. All of this exemplifies what I've been saying for years. There's no background check on the planet that's gonna prevent a crazy person from getting a gun if they haven't done anything crazy or violent before the background check. Over 20 of the most recent major mass shootings were committed by people who passed the background check to own the gun they used. Now some say, well, we already have background checks. And they're right, over the past 20 years, those background checks have kept more than two million dangerous people from buying a gun. But the loopholes that currently exist in the law have allowed way too many criminals and folks who shouldn't be getting guns, it's allowed them to avoid background checks entirely. And don't get it twisted. A universal background check simply means you can't sell or buy guns privately without a background check. And I've already talked about how there's no way to enforce a universal background check without creating a gun registration, which history has proven leads to a gun confiscation. You say guns, guns will be taken. No one will be able to be armed. We yes, will sir. take all yes, weapons. Sir. That happened today in this wealthy neighborhood where homeowners had armed themselves to protect their mansions. <laughs> Residents were handcuffed on the ground 
In the end, police took their weapons but let them stay in their homes. They were a little bit threatened because our weapons were bigger than their weapons. But Marie remembers how upset she got when the police department threatened to take her firearm. You're letting the thugs get away with everything, and you're coming to honest, good citizens and taking away their protection, and it is wrong, wrong, wrong. I saw them smash her gun given to her by grandmother, grandfather, just against the curb. The other things that they busted up, the 22 rifle they busted up, these were police officers that went too far. Oh, this is like Australia. All of a sudden, boom, they got our rights. Not to mention, even if there were universal background checks, none of the over 20 mass shooters would have been stopped by it. In 2013, over 10,000 people died because of intoxicated driving. Common sense would dictate, put a car breathalyzer in every car so that if you blow when your alcohol level is above a preset limit, your car doesn't start. This would single-handedly stop drunk driving accidents in its tracks. Yet, if this were ever passed, it would be met with outrage by not only the country, but anti-gunners as well. But because drunk driving deaths don't get the same media attention as deaths resulting from guns, even though drunk driving deaths many times exceed or equal and sometimes just sit below gun deaths, they ignore that and push for universal background checks, even though common sense dictates that it will have inconsequential effect on stopping criminals and the mentally ill from getting guns while putting an unnecessary burden on good people. Now, Hillary, I got the election in the bag. Clinton is going all kindergarten cop on us by wanting to institute a federally mandated timeout period. If we could just put some time out between the person who's upset because he got fired or the domestic abuse or whatever other motivation. Is she even listening to what she's saying? Do we really believe criminals and the mentally ill will walk into a gun store and say, hey, I want to buy a gun and I want to kill some people only to have the gun store attendant put them in time out in the back of the store so he can rethink his decision to kill people. This is America, not Sesame Street. Putting people in temporary timeouts as a way to prevent violence is the solution of morons. It's getting people killed. This guy bought a gun with the intention of killing people two months before he actually did it. So are we going to propose three month waiting periods now? So we can have more people end up like Carol Bone, who was stabbed to death two days after she applied for a permit to buy a gun to protect herself against the boyfriend she had a restraining order against. Because in New Jersey, where she lived, there's a 30 day waiting period before you can get a permit to purchase a gun. Not carry, simply purchase. But that's the way my friend's life was ended. Because she couldn't protect herself. And she applied April 21st for a gun permit. It was too long to wait to get a gun. The permitting system is atrocious. The law says 30 days. It should be issued in 30 days. And very, very seldomly do we see a permit that's actually issued in less than 30 days from the time it was applied for. I I'm sorry, but these supposed common sense gun control measures are nothing more than political Febreze used to mask overwhelming stench of violence in this country. Should we be trying to do something about the violence in this country? Absolutely, and guns should be a part of that conversation, along with knives and any other weapon. However, they shouldn't be the only focus or the majority of the focus. This man's issue wasn't a gun, the same way a morbidly obese person's issue isn't a spoon or fork. Let's face it, the gun issue is nothing more than low-hanging fruit for Hillary and the rest of the gun control zealots. She can stand on top of gun control, beat her chest, and make it sound like she's talking about something when she's not. And it's getting disrespectful that you think American people are that stupid. So do me a favor, take all of those useless gun control laws, type them up in a little neat email, then delete them because they don't work. And to the parents of Allison Parker and Adam Ward, I have no right to tell any parent how to grieve for the loss of their child. Grief inspired advocacy can be extremely effective and powerful. And I say run full speed to find a way to end violence like this. However, sometimes, in a fight, we can become so emotional, everyone and things starts looking like the enemy, even if they're there to help us. I'm deeply sorry for your loss.